Welcome back to the Energy Tips for week 43, 20th till 26th of October 2019. My name is Jona Brindes. Welcome, Heart Warriors. Welcome, Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be looking at the energies that are affecting us here in this next week and how to out vibrate it, how to grow past it, to see context in them to see meaning in them and how it can support us in our self-healing journey. It's the time of transformation, guys, and starting next week, there is a massive turbo in this whole death of the old and collapse correction that is going on. So what does this mean for us? Is this comfortable or is this uncomfortable? Well, I can tell you that most of us probably experience this as uncomfortable because in this collapse is the collapse of everything that is not true. And we might look at the outside and say, okay, well, you know, media is not true, social media is not true, pollution is not true, politics are not true. You know, we look at the outside and say, oh yeah, we can see what's not true. But the way where this is going now is to the inside things. What about us isn't true? Are we truly living? Are we truly embodying what is true to us? What our values are? What our boundaries are? What our preferences are? Are we living it? This isn't about activism or standing up for anything or fighting against anything. When we are not in truth, then we are in a place of deficiency, which means we don't have enough truth or we cannot see enough truth. And how can you fight deficiency? How can you fight the absence of something? You can't. If you try, you get burned out in the experience. And this is where, you know, this week's special sort of task here comes in, and that is the spiritual emergence in us. What is this deficiency. It's the connection with a higher power. And of course, if you are religious or if you've been conditioned in a religious way, then you will immediately contextualize this as something religious, as something faith-related. Here, we want to look at things untied or disengaged from religion. It may feel religious to some of you, but the point being that when we are in the state of seeking, all right? So that would be more uh, sort of the energy that you will feel here. And we are not in truth what happens to us internally. And that is what I call a spiritual emergency. So many of you have issues right now with aligning their 3D, their 3D life with uh, their inner truths. And this is here then where we need to understand that this whole true self notion is not about becoming sort of a spiritual person or a person, somebody. It's about tuning into the higher expression of ourself. See, we all have the choice. We can go into the ego self, which, as you know, has a function. It has the function to make us survive. But when we want to go into a higher expression, then survival is no longer the primary driving factor. We already know that we can survive. It's not hard to see how our ego, you know, steers us into, you know, sort of shoving our emotions away or, you know, not looking at things or telling ourselves lies as in, oh, yeah, they, they mean well, they're just not aware. That's not the higher expression of you. That is still part of your false self, the lower expression of yourself. So next week is going to bring in a very strong karmic aspect here. Namely, what do these relationships, what does my family, what does, you know, everything that I have been experiencing so far in my life even mean for me? What is the meaning of this? What is the learning in there, not the lesson, the learning. What did our soul decide to incarnate into 
so that we could optimally grow and find this higher expression of our self, our soul self, through these experiences. And you've probably already figured this out, but the main problem with all of this, not to be too fixated on the problem, but is the environment. So our environment, the world that we live in right now with these 7 billion people here on this planet that are more or less being remote controlled through consumerism and electronics, disconnect from another, is misinformation. So we are living in a world that is not favorable, that is not conducive for finding the higher expression of truth. And yet, the world can't help it. It's moving into the same place. So our job here now is to overcome this powerlessness that we all feel when we are in our ego, the freeze that we all have. We're being pushed, we're being forced onward. We're being forced into our own growth, into our own evolution, guys. And this is the positive message here. Anything that feels like rejection or hopelessness to you is misinformation. It's the misinformation of your false self telling you that there's nothing you can do. Passivity. Passivity is probably the biggest impotence that you are experiencing right now in your life. Many of you are in this place where you're already seeing things, but where you're not quite sure how to handle it, how to interpret it, you know, and how to internalize this perception or perceptivity that you're developing. Many of you are also wishing those times back where you were ignorant, where you didn't feel any of this, where you didn't pick up on any of this, where life was just easy because you didn't have to take responsibility. But see, this is a rather childish way of looking at the world. Helpless, powerless, and not having any responsibility for your action. This zooms us into our inner child, into all these unresolved aspects of our childhood where we indeed felt that way. And guess what? That is where you developed most of these coping strategies that you are still living today. So when you hear my words, I want you to really feel into what I'm saying here. There's no judgment in this. When you are passive, when you feel helpless, powerless, that's when you are basically being pulled into your childish state and in, into your wounded state. And in your wounded state, you have nothing but coping mechanisms in order to survive. And so you need to understand that this transformation is a self-selection process. You can stay there in your childish state, you know, and let the world run you and just go through your life based on survival. Or you can choose and decide, actively decide, that you want to be part of this, that you want to be a co-creator in your life, that you no longer just want to survive your life, that you want to create your life. And this is an active step. I sometimes call this the active step of self-proclamation. You literally just have to state in front of yourself, I no longer want to be just a survivor. I want to be a thriver. And this process of transformation is a process that comes from inside out and not from outside in. And therefore, waiting, seeking, sitting there and telling yourself that if only this or if only that would happen, then you could, is still part of that false self, guys. And I know how difficult this journey is. I have a lot of respect and I'll be the first one who admits that this is a very humbling journey. It is the dissolution of our ego that we are looking at, the collapse of our ego. And yes, at first it feels like death. And so within this spiritual emergency, many of you are feeling like you're dying. 
And what is it that we can do now? Where is this pointing us to? What is it ca calling us to do? It is calling us to... It is asking us to rely on our inner higher power. And this is uh, what I want you to see when you listen to the energy tips here right now. This next week, you know, is full on, okay, full on awesome or full on challenging for some of you, okay? It's the energy of ready or not, we're moving forward. And if you have a hard time making sense of what is in your life right now, then look at the, the context here from this entire year. Where has your energy been in these last nine, ten months? What have you manifested so far in this life? We've been here at this place last year. Last year I said, well, start with a vision board. And then in January I said, okay, this is active. You need to make active steps, form a strategy. And then a couple months ago I asked you, fill out your order form. Those are all active steps, guys. Those are all steps of self-selection and self-proclamation. This notion that, oh yeah, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm not going to, you know, try to control my life too much is misinformation, guys. Only dead fish go with the flow. A fish that is alive, that knows where it's going, can swim upstream if it wants to. So understand that this flow of life has nothing to do with passivity. This flow of life has something to do with you choosing where you want to go, what your goals are, what your preferences are, what your boundaries are. And without that, that I call integrity, true self-integrity, you end up seeking all your life. You end up waiting for something. You end up giving away your power to whatever externalized factor you see parent, a partner, a government, whatever it is. And this is the part here that comes in this next week. Collectively, as events are speeding up, you see all these, these crazy-making things that are going on here in social media and media escalating, escalating. Attacks, earth changes, Nothing seems to make sense anymore. It's like everything is inverted. Do you know what I mean when I say everything is inverted? This is the misinformation, guys. This is the, well, the matrix, as, as some of you call it. But what you don't see in this is that this liberation process is in full motion because the reason why this is all being illuminated right now is because truth is coming in. We're being forced to become true, to become real. Energy center-wise, it will trigger our first chakra big time. This is the karmic thread that weaves through our life. This is, has to do with our ancestors, where we were born into, uh, what this even means, what is the, the lesson there, what, why did our soul self pick these karmic setups. Then our second and fourth chakra, that is our emotions, needing to go into our heart and uh, translate it so in, in 3D terms this means us moving into truth and no longer repressing our emotions and working on truly feeling what we're feeling. This may sound like such a non-brainer, guys, but if you really look at your life and how you process your emotions and you know, how you handle what is happening, most of you are not really feeling what you're truly feeling or allowing yourself to feel it most of you either go into a memory or go into a future a fantasy. So your fifth chakra then is the one that is really, really acting up right now. Lots of you guys have issues with your throat, issues with your teeth, issues with, you know, this whole sort of throat chakra area. And that is 
the part here that is asking you to become real, to become true with yourself. So physically, you're going to feel this, or some of you may feel this uh, issues or, you know, something around your, your reproductive organs, your ovaries, your testes. Many of you will feel it around your liver or gallbladder. This is where, the, you know, all these repressed emotions, especially the anger and, uh, you know, this, this frustration that comes out of helplessness and passivity, where that manifests physically. A lot of people have teeth issues. I mentioned there's issues with your jaw. And we still have this uh, infectious and, and inflaming energy in our body. So take good care of your immune system, guys. Feel into what supports you. See through collective misinformation. I can say this here with you because it's not public. Flu vaccines. Feel this out. Feel the tru truth level of flu vaccines a part of this misinformation. And there's many more. Trust in your inner self healer, guys. This is what all this misinformation forces you to do. Emotionally, tricky week. You probably feel lost right now. You feel empty, rejected, attacked, or punished in some way. And many of you will, just to be able to handle this, this overwhelm that comes in, resort to backpedaling. I'm asking you here now, go deeper, guys. Feel rather than emote. Face your emotions and process them for real, not as in thinking about it or mentalizing them, but as in what does this emotion actually tell me? Where in my body do I feel this? What could this be linked to? What could this want to show me? If you... Trust in your true self, that your true self gives you these messages and these promptings and all this. All right? Go with it. Go deeper. Remember, this transformation is from inside out and not from outside in. You don't need other people to tell you how you feel. You don't need other people to make you feel anything. Stop blaming others. This is an inside-out process. This is an inside job, guys. And if you ever get to this place where you wish, and I was there many times, trust me, you'd be ignorant like you used to were when you were a child, when you, you know, didn't have any awareness. Remember, and this is also a question that is coming up quite a bit here. We're going to talk about this next week in a bit more detail. The pathological lack of self-awareness. It's called narcissism. I'm just going to leave this here and let this reverberate with you. Learn to healthily disengage. Not to cope, to disengage. Just say to yourself, you know what, this emotion, I can feel this. And I can also tell where this is coming from and, you know, sort of what this is dealing with. But that's just a coping mechanism. I no longer want this lower expression of myself. I want the higher expression of myself. Do I already know what a healthier way to deal with things would look like? No. Okay. Then the one thing that I know, though, is that I can disengage. I can say, stop. I can say, you know, I don't want to feel that way. Not as in, like, repressing the emotion. Not as in dissociating from what is going on. But as in realizing that whatever it is that makes me cringe, that makes me contract, that makes me feel degraded in some kind, in some way, is not for me. I just don't no longer entertain this, period. Mentally, of course, we have to deal with this indecision. And remember, indecision is, is a form of passivity as well. It's toxic too. So reflect on your ruminating. You know, reflect on your ruminating. This is this is the power of your consciousness. This isn't the power of your mind. It's the con the, your consciousness is what allows you to observe your mind. Here you got the, the the hierarchy of things, okay? If your consciousness wasn't a higher pay grade than your mind, you wouldn't be able to observe it. But that doesn't mean it's you. You don't have to identify with your mind. And, and the opposite, ignorance is not bliss, guys. It's shadow. So every time you go into ignorance, every time you ignore, you know, this deeper inner prompting, 
you're entertaining some kind of shadow in you because it's linked to coping and coping has led to these parts in you that you cannot quite love about yourself yet. So this next week is really, really good to make an action list and to focus on the things that you can change and to focus on what you can change, all right? So don't sit there and say, oh, I can't do anything because this or this or this or this. Those are all external things. Go into like, okay, yeah, it's rough right now. Yes, I want to, you know, get out of this relationship, but I don't know how because we are too enmeshed em financially, emotionally, and so forth. Yes, this is rough. Okay, then make an action list. What can I do? What are the things that, that I can do to prepare? Or what are the things that... You know, I can do to increase my freedom, to increase, you know, my independence. Does this mean that you're going to have to look at some of the parts that you are responsible for? Yes, absolutely. But that doesn't need to be, you know, something that you need to be afraid of. Remember, when you take responsibility for things, that's also when you can take the power that comes with that, namely independence and freedom. All right, so you can't just sit there and tell yourself that the only reason why you're not doing anything is because of others or external circumstances. Then you're giving that power away. All right. In relationships, there's going to be a lot of karmic stuff here for you guys, whether it's karmic, whether it's family related, or uh, you know, romantic relationship related. Uh, we still have to deal with identifying toxicity in our relationships and. This isn't a nice process. I'm with you there, guys. But, you know, the first thing that you can do, and that could be on your action list, is to stop focusing on the other. Stop focusing on, on how, you know, the other interprets what you say or, you know, how it makes them feel, what, how you feel or what your boundaries are, you know, how they're going to deal with this. Stop focusing on that. That's a form of externalization. All right? And, and stop making excuses for others and yourself. A lack of awareness is not an excuse. Now, do you have to take responsibility for not being able to see something prior to this awakening that you are going through right now? No. You can say to yourself, wow, you know, I never saw this before. So now that I'm seeing this, I can take responsibility for it. So work with your shadow, guys. Your shadow is part of your roadmap. It is showing you all these things that you shoved away, where you believed in, in misinformation or where you externalized your powers. And underneath your shadow is a treasure. There's your talent. There's your true power. Okay? So you'll never really learn how to embody this higher expression of yourself if you don't work with your shadow because they are hidden underneath it, underneath the things that you never wanted to look at is your true power. So that said, next week is a really good time for negotiations within relationships, but also for business. A really good time for business and business opportunities next week. So stop seeking or waiting. Shine your light into the things that were kept in darkness before. And that's probably the best tip I can give you for all week because that's what's going to protect you. That's what's going to liberate you. Spiritually, Obviously, we're talking about raising your awareness and how enlightenment is nothing but the expression of the power within you to shine your light where there was darkness before. Guys, there's, there are very, very powerful spiritual instructions in that. It doesn't matter if you're ready or not. What this message tells you is that you have the power of light within you. Granted, some of us have to work on, the, on our capacity for light, you know, the, the, the ability to hold this, because we've been kept small by all the darkness that we've harbored or that, we, that we've allowed others, you know, sort of to inject into us, okay? But the moment you see this, the moment you shine light to this, is the moment you no longer externalize. So it doesn't matter what you've done before. Right now, you are looking at it. And this feels a little alone. You feel a little empty there. You feel alone. And remember, the emptiness that is there when you start shining light into things is nothing but your false self. 
Because as your ego dies, as all these false self-projections, you know, the things that you thought you had to be or that you were told that you're not or that you were told to be, you know, those are all empty. That is the empty shell, your false self. So growing into your truth is a letting go process and this can be challenging. This is when you need to remember that you have this higher power in you. This is when you need to remember to call on your inner light. Call on grace to support you. This is what soul embodiment means. It means to, to see everything that happens in your life as an emotional and spiritual maturity or evolution process. And the larger context, the larger meaning, the larger meaning of this is coming home. So the emptiness you feel in your life is because you're not home. You're not embodying. You're not inhabiting your space. You're not fully inhabiting yourself. And that's why you're so susceptible from the outside. This is also why so many of you have issues with energies coming in from the outside. Now, energetically, then, you know, the, the bottom line is, is getting real, is get real with yourself and the running away from the truth. Going to honest self-reflection, inventory. If you've listened to the uh, Sacred Self-Healing Step 7 and 8 that we recorded yesterday, wonderful, wonderful training for that. Present, be present in your moment. Be, always be present. Catch when you go into the past, into your memory, or into the future, the, the future rising, you know, or the fantasizing. Catch that, because that, that's when you externalize. That's when you slip back into your false self. And those of you who already have a good feeling for things, if you feel confronted with something that um, I would call karmic guilt or karmic shame, maybe something from your past lives, doesn't matter how you contextualize it, remember that this is what has been you know, that your soul has set you up as karmic setup in the sense, not as a setup as in, in conjure, but as a, like you needed to go through this, all right, to overcome this part of your karma. So the victimhood and the, the trauma that you have experienced is something that was there to teach you something, but to engage with it and to, to feed it and to fixate on victimhood that is not in alignment with your true self. All right. The lesson here is to grow out of it, to grow from the victim into the survivor, into the thriver. Okay. So see the collapse that you are feeling internally as a collapse of the false in you, as a part of your growth, your maturity, you know, from sort of spiritual childishness into spiritual adolescence. It's the emergence of truth in you. Make the best of it, guys. Uh, you all know that uh, you can reach me if you need contextualization help. All right. Don't think that you're alone with this. Share. Share wherever you can. Help others to see that they are not alone and that this barrier that they're experiencing or the spiritual emergency that they're experiencing right now doesn't mean that they're crazy or doesn't mean that they're lost. It just means that they have to work with their ego now and allow their line, their light to shine into that now. Okay guys, talk to you next week. Thank you so much for supporting Trans Codes. Bye bye.